Hello everyone, I um, hope you're enjoying the event so far. Uh, we're going to get back to the Friendly Fire tournament in just a moment. Uh, but right now we have another Gamepad online interview. So we've been talking to people from the games industry uh, about their journeys and about the work they do. Uh, and uh, today, or right now, uh, I'm speaking with uh, Jian Rossu, uh, the CEO of the video game studio Spiders. Uh, welcome. Thank you, welcome. I'm very happy to be with you and uh, hello to everyone. Cool. No, thanks for joining us. Um, before we get into the questions, uh, just to let people know that you can send us your thoughts in the chat uh, and you can also join the Gamepad uh, Discord where you can continue the discussions and we will also have an extended version uh, of this interview uh, in the Discord after the event. Um, so yeah, let's get straight into it. Uh, so, uh, Jeanne, you are so you're a French French games developer, and you've kind of like literally worked your way up uh, the industry. So you've been a two D graphic artist, you've been a writer, project manager, director, and you are now uh, CEO. Um, so you, you've kind of been at different levels. Uh, how have you found that journey? Like, how has it been for you? Uh, well, first, it took some time. I mean, uh, I began to work in this industry more than 20 years ago, so uh, uh, it was probably different back then than it mm. is now. But for example, there was no video game school existing. So uh, I joined uh, the industry um, and, uh, well, a little, I would not say by mistake, but by chance in some ways. Okay. And uh, I was doing some art and then uh, I had the occasion to work for a, for a very small um, company that was just beginning, and then you know I liked it. I was playing video games since my childhood, so I yeah. I was very very happy to work there, and uh, I had the occasion to work as a producer and uh, then to change uh, into another game company. So it was more a journey than really something that I had planned for uh, first. Okay. It was. Uh, honestly, a lot of luck, I think. <laughs> yeah, I guess <laughs> to be honest. Is. Uh, yeah, probably. Mm. Um, and um, when I met uh, the team I'm working still actually, and uh, with whom I'm created spiders, uh, it was uh, I, I would say 15 years ago um, in another game company uh, called um, the Crystal. Um, I was a uh, project manager of um, a small RPG on PC only, that was called Silver Fool, and we enjoyed that much working all together, then we decided to create Spiders. So it was honestly a lot of uh, uh, as a situation of, um, you know, chance and uh, yeah. a nice meeting. And this is something I really enjoy about the video game industry, that there are so many amazing people and uh, in many different, you know, uh, fields of expertise, um, amazing, I would say, you know, musician, artist, uh, coders, and um, it's working with them that is for me one of the most interesting and uh, exciting part of the job. Mm. Cool. No, it sounds really cool. And like, let's say going uh, all the way back, um, you say like, you know, obviously you're into video games. Uh, what would you say is like the the game that brought you into video games? Like, what what was the first game you remember playing or uh, that really kind of caught your attention? Uh, um, I was lucky enough to have a console when I was uh, very small. Um, it was a console called ColecoVision. I don't know if you've ever heard about it. It's a I very haven't. old device. Okay. And uh, yeah. I was playing Donkey Kong, uh, yeah. the very first one. You know, oh, cool. with a guy running and we had to jump to avoid, you know, these barrels uh, yeah, yeah. thrown by the monkey. So, yeah, this was my really first video game. And uh, then I had some, you know, more evolved devices. I had other consoles. I also had um, an Amstrad uh, computer. So, uh, uh, I never quit playing. So, uh, you know, I was lucky enough to see a lot of different games. But I, I think that the first contact with this Donkey Kong game was for me something very important. Uh, it was a uh, discovery that was amazing. Yeah. Okay. And out of interest, have you have you kept any of your old consoles or are they 
Uh, I've well, it's still working, uh, <laughs> but I let it go. He has um, the kind of uh, geek cafe in Paris where you can play all games. So uh, I let it to, to the cafe so other people can enjoy the game and try the school uh, cool. games there. So. Uh, Okay, <laughs> but it's still working. <laughs> yeah, it's somewhere. It's, it's, it's still around. Cool. Um, so I understand that you've got a uh, a passion for imaginary universes uh, as well as video games, uh, obviously. So um, with that interest in like science fiction, how have you brought that to the games that you've been a part of and and developed? Well, in fact, uh, I'm not only playing video games, I'm also a player of pen and papers uh, RPGs, so the traditional, you know, DMDs and all these type of games, yeah. uh, too, and uh, many other types of games like that. Uh, I used to write scenarios for that too, um, not on a professional aspect, but just, you know, for friends. Mm. Um, I was a game master, and um, I think it was the beginning of my passion for writing stories and creating universe whose at first, uh, mostly dedicated to pen and paper RPGs. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, when I had the luck to, to realize the same type of things for video games, I was obviously playing some RPGs also on the computer. Uh, I was, you know, the old Baldur games and all these type of things. So it was a kind of dream for me to work, to be able to work on that type of things. Uh, but at the beginning of my career, it was not uh, possible. The company I was working for were more doing some games on uh, you know for handle consoles or mobile mm. so not the type of platform back then where you could play RPGs. Yeah. But then when I joined Monte Cristo uh, I was able to to create uh, the first universe I did for um, for video games. It was a fantasy universe, uh, more um, steampunk uh, you know inspired in some ways. Uh, but I always had um, you know um, as a goal to work on sci-fi stuff. Mm. And it was not easy because uh, publishers were not sure that sci-fi could work uh, out of the usual um, Star Wars settings. Uh, so it was right. very difficult to find a publisher for something else than you know uh, this type of world. So uh, uh, we took some time to convince them that um, the world we create for Mars was something valuable and but in the end, they well, they believed in it, and yeah. we managed to sell the game. Okay. And we create two games in this world. Cool. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the idea that science fiction uh, is hard to sell, like now, it, it sounds uh, weird because it's uh, it's all around. But okay. Um, and so from that, like, I guess from that first uh, initial role uh, working on your first game. <clears throat> To now, as I mentioned, you have your own studio, and how how have you found your your role in games changing um, now versus when you started? Like, uh, are you you doing different tasks? Like, how have you found your uh, your place in that in that development cycle? Um, I think that well, of course, uh, when I began, I was mostly doing uh, 2D art. It was pixel art, in fact, of course. Mm. Uh, back then, um, I was working on, on Game Boy and Game Boy Colors uh, games. So it was you know, some very small um, designs. And well, it was interesting and funny because it was a small, small team uh, and very young team. We were uh, so excited to work inside games that we were working a lot. Uh, crunch mod was not even a word back then, so, but we were working all day, all night long for, from time to time. So it was a very different time. Um, and even if I enjoyed it, uh, of course, uh, I would not have stayed, I suppose, if it wasn't was the yeah, game. But, that's true. Um, but I was probably a little frustrated just to, um, to work on licensed stuff because most of the Game Boy games was based on uh, licensed stuff, you know, uh, based on movies or animations or type of things. And it was not that creative. So uh, I felt, uh, yeah, a little frustrated and I wanted to move into more creative projects. Um, and it took some time to finally be able to join a company where I could be part of the of the creation of the game. Mm. Um, and I was also writing a lot uh, since, uh, well, 
is nearly my, I would say, childhood. Yeah. I was writing a lot of stories. And it was also something that I, you know, I wanted to do in, in video games. And Were you uh, when, uh, video game stories or just writing stories in general, like books? Um, or... When I was younger, I was writing some novels mostly. Okay. Um, I wanted to become a comic book uh, scenario writer when I was in really a teenager, of course. But um, then I discovered how to write for game, and it's a completely different exercise. And I love it, uh, mm -hmm. really. It's something that is completely unique and uh, specific to the game, because you have to work with other people, you have to integrate all the gameplay aspects, to think about what the player will do inside the game, and you're not writing about yourself, but you have to write for the others and really to include them into that uh, experience. And it's something that I find really, you know, I don't know, different and exciting. You really try to think of others, and even if we maybe not always succeed, uh, it's something that I find, uh, you know, uh, unique to the video game. And that's what really one thing that I really like. The other point is that we create some amazing universe that could not probably be uh, seen into movies or things like that. We can um, really make other people experience some you know, completely crazy stuff or completely mm. crazy uh, worlds. And not only uh, discovering from the outside, like when you're reading a book, but really be part of it. You know? So uh, it's something that uh, I wanted to do back then, and I'm still wanting to do, and I'm trying to you know, try to improve um, the mechanism of, the, of our games for that to, to work better, uh, to be more, you know, uh, complex or reactive to the player's decision. Yeah. And um, just honestly, to be able to do that, uh, I think that I had no choice than created my own studio uh, with the people I knew uh, would have the same, uh, you know, uh, idea of video games. Um, and uh, by working with them, we managed to do it because at first we had no money to do all these games. We were indie, yeah. we had no investment. We was a lot about, you know, doing some technical missions to take a little money from a crew, you know, stuff. And then uh, being able to, to our first game, which was a very small thing designed for kids. And, you know, bit by bit, we managed to do some bigger and more complex game, but uh, we took the long road for that. I'm not regretting it, mm. but uh, because it was interesting and we learned a lot. Yeah, it's part of the but, journey. Uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. I think that we, we honestly, um, our work, but ourselves too, um, uh, became better uh, through this journey also. Not only as writers, but really as game creators. Yeah, and I do like that aspect of like writing and creating stories, like for video games. Where so like I um, I write comics, I write manga comics. But what I like about sort of I guess narrative design is you're you're having to take into account the player experience and the player actions, and that's like a, a whole other level on top of just the story that you want to tell. It's like how does it make the player feel? What do you want them to feel at at what point, and and how are they going to interact with your story? So. Yeah, that's a cool kind of uh, uh, thing that you you get to do, and like so you, you mentioned working on licensed um, properties, which wasn't as creative, and it kind of forced you to make your own studio. So uh, so you eventually made your own studio uh, called Spiders. And my first question is, where did that name come from? Uh, why why the name Spiders? Uh. It's a mix of different things. Uh, we wanted to have an English name, of course, for, um, even if we are French, uh, for you know, a more international understanding of who we were. Right. But um, we were thinking first about something that was about craft. You know? So um, we think about a lot of different names, and uh, most of them were already taken. So it was <laughs> a problem. Yeah. So, uh, and Something about waving things, you know, waving stories, waving the universe. And from that point, the idea of the spiders came out. Um, and to be honest, as the first universe we created um, uh, in the company, and we created even before the company really exists, uh, was set on Mars. 
it was also a kind of, uh, I would say, uh, homage. Uh, I don't know if the word is the right word in English, but yeah. uh, kind of uh, pay of respect to um, uh, David Bowie, a first group, oh. which was called Riders for Mars. And uh, okay. yeah, it, it, uh, <laughs> I did not expect that. Meaning, uh, yeah, the spider. Okay, all right. I didn't expect. I, I wasn't sure if it's like someone had a fear of spiders and you wanted to confront that fear, or it was some other meaning. But cool. Um, so then, as as like CEO of the of the company, you're in a position to, I guess, bring people on the team to essentially hire people to be part of this uh, thing that you're creating. And so I I work with uh, sort of a lot of young people, and some of which you know want to be in the video games uh, industry, some of which are probably watching uh, right now. So as someone in the position, you know, I guess you must have done a few like interviews. Um, what kind of, I guess essentially what kind of advice uh, can you give to young people who are uh, possibly going to be in the, in the position of having to interview for a job? Uh, like what have you seen that, that goes well in your, in your uh, estimation? I would say that first, um, do video games. I mean, um, these are interesting and can bring you a lot of important and interesting uh, points of view and elements. But, for example, doing some game jams or doing some uh, um, small projects with other teammates or this type of things is, in fact, um, more important to me than uh, just knowing that you've done some uh, an amazing school, for example, it's, I think that's really um, being able to show your own work, uh, your own creation, even, even if it's a very small game uh, or just a mod for another game, it's it's far more important to, uh, to understand how it works in a team, to be able to work with other people, um, than just, you know, um, having learned plenty of things at school, because in the end, I think that teamwork is what makes good video games yeah. and it's not something that is always learned or easily learned at school so uh, um, I would suggest uh, to uh, work with, um, with, I don't know, teams that you can meet in different events. I would also recommend to uh, analyze um, the game you're playing, uh, your favorite games, to spend some time you know, thinking into why you, you love this game, why you uh, really enjoy um, this part of the gameplay, uh, but also try to find uh, the mistakes in, uh, in the game to uh, what could be improved, uh, because it's something that is uh, asked a lot during interviews. Uh, okay. We really always ask, um, you know, um, what is your favorite game? What would, uh, what are you, you know, liking more in that game? Or what would you change if you want to improve it? And this is really uh, always something that we are asking, just to know if you are a real player, and of course, if you uh, uh, have thought a little far um, after the, the fact that, okay, you enjoy that game, but why? And what what, what is really good inside the game? So yeah. This is exactly the type of question we can ask. So it's better to think about it before just coming to the interview, of course. Cool. It can be helpful. And... Um, Oh, mostly a part of that, if you are, you know, really into video games, it can be really hard. Um, I would also suggest not to accept uh, a terrible summer salary or not to accept crunch. It's not normal to work into these conditions. Mm. Um, if it's, of course, not to accept, to accept uh, any uh, bullying or any type of behavior like that. Um, we have to be respectful to each other in the industry. It's not because it's um, a job of passion that you have to, to uh, endure a terrible situation. It should never happen. Uh, and if it happens in the company you are in, and if you talk about it, it's not changing, um, remember that it's not the wider game industry that is at fault here. It's only one company. And you can always leave and find a better one. And um, it happened to me my, during my uh, career to be in some company where I felt I, I was not you know, at the right place. And uh, for a while, I was so disgusted that I stopped working by the game industry for um, nearly two years. Oh. And uh, 
that moment, I really thought that I would never work again for the video game. And I liked games. Uh, I liked to create. But the problem was just uh, one bad habit. And you can completely ruin your experience yeah. if you have that bad experience. Yeah. So, um, it's really for people and, and don't stay in the bad situation because uh, it's not what it should be. Remember that there are plenty of other companies around, and if one is not a good word for you, there will probably be others that will be so happy to welcome you. Mm. So uh, don't uh, endure and uh, and suffer because of your passion. Your passion should be something that is positive and not a source of uh, suffering. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I know it may sound a little, you know, uh, um, uh, too gentle or too... I, I, no, I really know but I've seen so many good and amazing creative people that was discussed by the industry and I want that to stop. And mm. so I think that um, the first thing you really have to keep in mind when you join a company is if it's not a good one, move and find another one, a better one that will work on you. Yeah, no, uh, that's good advice. I think, <coughs> like you say, it's like when things need to change, the only way they change is if, if you say something. Uh, really so um, and yeah I think for uh, the young people kind of listening uh, in terms of like interview definitely good advice uh, on that so uh, yeah please keep, keep that in mind um, I'm going to take a, a quick break and get back to the uh, live stream um, but like I said we're going to have uh, an extended version of this interview which will be available uh, in the discord at some point after the event so um, you can stick around for that also, cool. All right, and I'm gonna ask uh, the rest a few, just a few more questions on top of that, and then I'll like edit it together. So um, I'm gonna pick up actually just from where uh, where you were, and then ask a bit more about uh, uh, spiders as well. Um, and then also I'll end just by asking about sort of representation uh, in the industry uh, a little bit. So um, yeah, we'll kind of go again. Um, Cool. All right. So then, like you talked a bit about like your uh, your path in the industry, and you talked a bit about school uh, and the role of school. So I just interested to know if you can touch on like how or what role did your education play uh, in your career? So did you specifically study um, uh, things with uh, subjects related to video games, or was it something you sort of self taught? Like how did that uh, play out? Um, there was no uh, specific studies back then in video games, so, and I did not study for long, to be honest. <laughs> um, I did uh, two years in Latin and Greek school, so it was uh, in La Sorbonne, in Paris. Uh, so it was uh, mostly about, you know, ancient languages, and uh, but also French, um, classical, um, you know, literature, this type of things. Yeah. And um, then I moved to an art school for one year, and but I, I realized that I was not, you know, some very interesting studies. I, I liked it, but um, it was only leading mostly to, to become a teacher, and that was not something I wanted to do. So uh, I stopped, and uh, I tried to find a job directly, um, just you know because I was uh, already. Um, designing a lot on my computer at home. Uh, I was already doing some things at home, so okay. this is how I joined, uh, to be honest. And uh, there was no perfect way to join the industry, I think, back then. Mm. 20, 22 years ago, uh, there was no you know, specific way to join the industry because as there were no specific tool, it was just, you know, mostly it was by luck or uh, if you were, you know, uh, you had the, the occasion to know some people into the industry, yeah. uh, I think it changed a lot now because there are these, uh, these schools in different uh, specialties. Um, and of course, companies are now more known, I think. And uh, it's, yeah, really completely different. Um, yeah. in, a, in a good way, I mean, because my yeah. uh, well, not was bad, but it was very, very different. But I think it's in a good way because there are more companies. 
uh, more choices uh, and uh, of course uh, the industry more that is more diverse now than it was um, back then. yeah uh, yeah I can imagine and I mean I think it, it's good to kind of highlight that there are different routes in because um, sometimes you still have the the narrative here that you know there's certain steps to take and if you don't take the steps or if you miss out the steps then it's done it's done forever which is not at all the case so yeah I think um, it's, it's good for you to highlight that there's just there's no traditional way in really there are more more routes now but you know if you if one doesn't work you can find another really exactly yeah I, I really do believe that uh, for example we have a lot of artists um, in the studio that not do some specific, uh, you know, art school or anything, mm. but their portfolio, their arts was so amazing that they yeah, welcome. We were very happy to, to have them in the team. So yeah. um, it's, it's not always something about school or about your previous experience. I think that's a more diverse uh, team is. And I'm not talking only about uh, the new course of person, but each experience is unique. You can bring some very unique points of view um, to the team and you know bring some um, richness to it. So uh, this is what I'm waiting for now. Cool. Okay. It can be. Yeah. It all mean that we have created. Uh, I'm sorry if I have just. Uh, um, we create. Uh, we are actually creating this an association in France. Um, um, I don't know the, the name in English that word. Uh, it's uh, so we are paying for the, the for the schools. You know, most of the video game school in France are private, so they are costing uh -huh. a lot of money. And um, we create this association to pay for the studies of uh, young students that could not afford this type uh -huh. of studies, like a scholarship. To, uh, some, you know, more diverse people to join the industry. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah, that's really good. Nice, and uh, and then. So sort of coming back to uh, sort of your uh, company now, Spiders. You, so you've got your own game engine, and um, which is called Silk Engine. Uh, I'm just interested to know uh, why you've you've gone the path of creating your own engine rather than licensing uh, an existing engine like you know everyone uses the Unreal Engine. Um, yeah, why have you gone and created your own? Um, well, when we created the company, um, Unreal Engine was very uh, expensive. Uh, so um, it was um, so it was more than it was twenty years uh, uh, twelve years ago. Sorry, so twelve mm. years ago, um, Unreal was still expensive. Uh, Unity was not really good, to be honest. It was the very beginning, and it was not uh, you know, completely uh, working most of all on console. And we really wanted to work on uh, well, it was the PS3 back then. Uh, so um, we had some very good uh, developers in the team, some very good uh, programmers, so, um, and they were also excited at the idea of created, uh, creating an, an engine. So it happens because of that, because we had no money, and because we had okay. uh, the person in the team that could do it. Right. And uh, of course, this engine evolved a lot. <laughs> if you're looking what we were able to do uh, 12 years ago, you, wish you would be horrified. But, uh, it evolved a lot, and uh, we also create some very specific tools designed for creating our games, so uh, RPGs. We create, for example, tools to tr to write some uh, um, multi-branching dialogues. So. Uh, we also write and uh, create some tools to create some cutscenes, for example. Um, so a lot of editing tools that are really designed to support RPGs. And now, if we had to move to a more commercial uh, engine, we would have to you know, to create again all these tools. Uh, yeah. It would be, uh, you know, it would take a very very long time. Yeah. So in the end, it's more interesting for us to stick to this to this engine to make it evolve to improve it. As much as we can, um, and uh, well, to even if we know that it's not probably as technically perfect as can be Unreal, for example, it's more dedicated to the type of games we're doing. Yeah, so in some way, it's more useful to our work. Yeah, for you and yeah, your type of games. Yeah, okay, that's interesting. I, yeah, I was, I was interested in that just because so I like 
I, uh, I make comics now and uh, we have a video game event, but before that I used to work as a software engineer, uh, not in video games, mm. but, um, but so I know what it, what it means to create your own uh, engine from scratch, um, your own framework and everything, and how much work uh, is involved in that. So I was just interested to know why, um, but it makes sense, I guess, because you've got, within your studio, you've got a particular type of game that you make, so it makes sense to uh, craft something that helps you make the best games that uh, that you can. But yeah, I know it's a lot of work. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it took a long time you know, with what we have, what we have now, because um, you know, even uh, not only the, the, the engine, but uh, the tool set completely evolved and and is a uh, lot different than what we had at mm. the very beginning. Yeah. Okay. And so I just want to sort of. Uh, wrap up the interview just by speaking about I guess the industry uh, as a whole from your perspective and I know uh, in the UK uh, games industry recently did a, uh, a census uh, looking at sort of different aspects of diversity uh, in the video games industry uh, and uh, the numbers weren't good but <laughs> basically I mean like you said it, it's it's improved and I'm, I'm sure it has but it they weren't good numbers so uh, I'm just thinking like from your perspective, um, uh, as a female games developer, like how have you seen uh, representation change since you've been in the industry, and like what do you feel still needs to change going forward, um, just to make games a bit more representative of the people that play them? Well, there is still a very long road, honestly, to, to be able to reach some. Uh, um, I would as diverse as our players are uh, teams. Um, when I began, I was and for a long time the only girl in the, in the team, uh, but yeah, it was more than 20 years ago. Um, I knew some other um, girls working in the video game industry, uh, but were really, 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 um, you know, few of, of, of us. And um, in France, at least, I can't speak for other countries. Yeah, uh, but, I speak for the um, UK, there's very few <laughs> still. Yeah. And uh, honestly, most of the, um, not most, all the team was white. Mm. And um, yeah, it's it changed a lot um, through, through the years. I mean, we are still far from what I would, uh, you know, really uh, um, like to have in many different aspects. Um, as I told you um, when we were talking about this. Um, this association we are creating, mm. um, and this is the reason we, we have created this, this uh, association. The idea was because, um, in, in fact, when we are recruiting people, uh, most of the, um, of the uh, letters we, we are receiving uh, are coming from people that are really all looking the same and that have really all the same background. So they are you know, coming from uh, a wealthy uh, family enough to pay this these schools that are you know, highly expensive. So, um, we also want to have a more um, socially diverse um, people coming to uh, to the, the video game development. And one of the you know way to do that was cre um, helping um, people to, to reach this school and to be able to, to do uh, their you know the, their study there and to reach the video game industry in the end. So. Uh, we thought that by doing that, we could uh, con uh, continue the improvement of the, of the industry. But yeah, there are still not enough uh, female developers, not enough black developers, not enough, I would say, even Asian developers, at least in France. Um, so there's still a lot, a lot to do. Um, it's changed. It's, it's slowly improving, but uh, we have to, to work for it uh, as game developers. And, as you know, as the industry itself, and uh, to do that, I think that uh, yeah, we have to help people to reach the industry. And um, one of the solution we found was uh, by you know uh, paying for school, but mm -hmm. they may have other ideas. I'm I'm completely open to you know to discuss yeah. about that <laughs> and to, uh, to help in any way I can. But uh, it's honestly, we we still have a lot of work to do. Yeah, have a difference in the industry, definitely. No, I, I I hear that, and I think sort of uh, here in the UK, I'm 
uh, sort of we're working on ways that we can get uh, young people from more diverse backgrounds uh, to just be, I mean, first of all, just be aware that they can have careers in the gaming industry uh, and then sort of help them find uh, routes towards that and working with other organisations that, that can do that. Because I feel, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, like video games very much now are, are like stories. So you're, you're essentially telling a story and the, you know, the, the best stories are, or the best kind of stories are ones that take you out of your um, own perspective and put you in another. Yeah. So the, I guess the more we can do that, um, the better, but that only happens if you're getting more uh, people with different perspectives uh, to make the game. So yeah, I think it's a necessary thing. And like you say, just it, it still needs uh, some work, but yeah, it sounds like you're doing a, a lot of good work. And uh, I guess just to uh, wrap up, just let people know uh, where they can find you uh, and your games, like online, website, social media. Uh, yeah, I should probably send you the links and connection if you if you want. Yes. It would be easier because uh, yeah, I, I I'm on Twitter. I'm not often on Twitter, so please uh, <laughs> don't uh, uh, you know produce against me because I'm not answering uh, fast. Because I'm uh, you know I have I haven't time enough to to spend too much time on, on Twitter, but uh, mm. I'm also on Facebook. Cool. Uh, but I'm trying to answer as much as I can. And um, of course, there is also the website of the company, but um, and the website of the association uh, we are working on for uh, for this to help these students. Um, I think that's something that is important. Is uh, as I told it a little before, that you will always uh, hear people say that you're not welcome or that you'll criticize um, the fact that the, the diversity and listen to these people. I mean, they are souls. Uh, we don't need them. Uh, the, the industry needs people that are diverse, that, are, that come with new ideas, with, with new stories. And uh, this can only come from a very, very diverse, uh, you know, uh, industry. And uh, if, you know, you barely do anything, once again, please uh, leave this guy, but don't leave the industry. Um, I know that there are plenty of stories around that are absolutely terrible and I feel terribly ashamed about you know, the way some people were treated in the industry, mm. uh, but there will be always some other people that will welcome you and that will be so happy to work with new talents and uh, yeah, I think it's really something important to say, not only to, of course, a young student, but also to some more seasoned people that have maybe left the industry, you can come back. You, know, you, you will find some you know, very happy people to, to mm -hmm. work with you. So please, uh, don't be afraid of the vital industry. It can be you know, frightening because uh, there are always some ages around, but listen to them. Uh, you know, most of them don't really do vital games in the end, so you're not obliged to listen to them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, uh, yeah, well said. Uh, well said. So, yeah, I mean, that uh, brings us to the end of the interview. Um, thank you very much, um, Jan, for joining us. It's been really good to uh, hear about the work you do, especially coming from another country and seeing how um, how things go uh, in France. So, yeah, thanks for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you for your time, too. And goodbye, everyone. I, I was very really happy to speak to you. Cool. And, you know, stick to your passion. It's so important. Mm. <laughs>